Hey everybody, it's Party Late. Welcome back to another chill episode of our Frostpunk 2 Utopia Builder Beta playthrough. Feeling pretty good about our current situation, to be perfectly honest. We managed to recover from our uh, circumstances at the end of episode 1, and things are looking pretty good. We went ahead and expanded our food district. We got a couple of buildings in there after researching them. And now not only is our food fully taken care of, it's actually being stockpiled because of the massive surplus. So... That's feeling very good, actually, and we'll need a food depot relatively soon, because in 14 weeks' time, uh, we're going to be topped up. Materials is also looking pretty good right now. In fact, here the resource depots are already full, and goods needs a little bit more work. We did some at the end of the previous session, but we have a little bit more distance to uh, close over here. The big issues, though, are heat, which I'm going to take a look at this session. Hopefully, we'll find some solutions relatively quickly, and even bigger than that, actually, is heat stamps. Struggling here, to be perfectly honest, at the end of the previous episode, we got rid of our debuff almost entirely from unmet demand for goods. So that's helped. We went from, what was it, 15 up to 20 a week. Hopefully that's going to make a significant difference, but this is really slowing us down. It's used for literally everything from research to district construction to building construction, everything. So it's been a bit of a bottleneck and hopefully uh, we've solved this or we're able to explore additional solutions for it through ideas and policies and all that good stuff. But uh, overall, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty all right. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to fulfill these objectives in the time we have left. We're almost halfway through the time frame of this uh, of this beta uh, because it is it is time limited. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to hit all of these, but I feel like if in the opening act, if I'd ignored the onboarding, or if I'd been a bit more freeform and done my own thing, I probably would have been a bit further along, to be perfectly honest. But that's neither here nor there. One thing I could do is start pushing towards more Frostland territories, as we are about to vote on city development efforts in 10 weeks' time. What's going on over here? Material output per capita is increased. I mean, do we really need that? Material output. We're doing perfectly fine. We're overboard as far as material output is concerned. And this is where pushing people uh, to vote against something comes into play. So I suppose I could uh, go in for the negotiations here. Right? And I could ask who. The foragers are mostly against. Well, I need to figure out who I reach out to. So these guys won't uh, negotiate because either it's already been negotiated or it's against their worldview. Oh. Is this what we promised the technocrats? We told them that they could choose the next, uh, like, agenda, right? So this is might be... Th this might be the result of what we promised them there. Ah, damn. Okay. Uh, w okay, that's fine. It doesn't mean we can't negotiate against them. So, 38 delegates. How many... How many foragers are here right now? So it's all machinists and technocrats. So there's about 19 foragers I might be able to convince to go against it, and that might just do the trick here. We add 11. No, actually, 11 is exactly what they need. So I have to basically convince the foragers to join my side and vote against the measure and hope that not all machinists join in. Wow. Okay. That's, uh... <laughs> Let's see how that plays out. So, foragers, let's talk. I want you to vote against, and in return, what will I give you? In return, I'll build a refurbishing goods factory. I kind of want to already, so I'm glad I've kind of held that in my back pocket, I guess, unintentionally. It's worked out. Alternatively, I could enact foraged additives uh, to increase food output per capita, or I could research worker shifts, weather adjusted shifts. Eat demand is slightly decreased. Oh. Now that's good. It does reduce resource production efficiency slightly, but it also reduces heat demand and disease. And like I said right at the beginning of the session, not three minutes ago, uh, heat is something I do want to try and solve for. Now I could push for this separately. I could push for this separately on my own, obviously, uh, but the refurbishing good goods factory I already kind of have on my agenda. So sure, we'll promise them this and uh, that should do the trick. Hopefully, we'll see what the hesitant few do. Let's push. Come on. Shut it down. Shut it down. Nice. That feels good. That feels good. Alright, good stuff. 
we shut that nonsense down. Beautiful. Got some people complaining over here, the technocrats in particular. Fair enough. But yes, I do have my promise to the foragers. I've got how long left? 39 weeks to build this. We'll have plenty of uh, heat stamps by then. I should hope, at least. We should have plenty by then. Uh, but yes, I was wondering if I shouldn't build some additional... Um, what are they called? Uh, logistics districts. So we can get some more Frostland teams, and we can explore more and more of the Frostland. That is one of our objectives, and I feel like... Um, there's lots to be had out here that we're just missing out on, partly because we don't have enough Frostland teams to even explore some of these places, but also partly because we're having to do it so very slowly. Um, and I just wonder if we can't uh, get a move on, you know? So, to that end, with 226 heat stamps, I think we're okay to maybe invest in an additional district. We have to obviously push up to the next spot with our fr Frostbreakers. There's a good spot over here. There's this spot over there that's a bit more distant. Uh, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll push up to that one. By the way, it's been pointed out to me that there is food closer to us, right over here. So I didn't have to go all the way up over here to get the food. I could have just gone in over here. Too late now. No use crying over spilt milk, but good to know when we're in a uh, food situation again. Uh, and I'm sure that'll happen in the relatively near future. Either way, back to frost breaking. Let's go ahead and cut through these resources as well. Why not? We're not going to make it all the way. Eh? That's That's perhaps why not. Let's find the most efficient path there first, and then we can go ahead and distract ourselves. Sure. I don't love those shapes. <laughs> I don't love those shapes. Heat demand has increased. That's not great. Let's take a look at our ideas here, because I do believe we have a generator upgrade available. Not in this preview, right? Autonomous uh, heater, also not in this preview. So we're really going to have to do this through, uh, through other means, eh? Worker shifts. So weather-adjusted shifts reduces Heat demand. Feels promising. Machine adjusted shifts increases squalor and reduces workforce requirement. Gotcha. Okay. Automation will free up the people, of course. And here we have weather adjusted and machine adjusted. So they have matching uh, goals, I guess. I mean, geez, guys. I, I think uh, I think we go with the weather adjusted shifts. Maybe I should have promised that instead. I didn't realize just how quickly I would dive into it. I was thinking I'll take some time to think about it, but it costs us nothing as far as heat stamps are concerned, and it's going to help with the heat situation. Now the question is, do we do it for the foragers, or do we do it for the uh, ice bloods? Well, the ice bloods are already devoted, so why don't we go ahead and do it for the foragers and see if we can't get them a bit more excited about us. So sure, let's develop this idea of weather-adjusted shifts. To protect worker health, workplaces must adapt working hours to the weather conditions. Resource production efficiency is slightly decreased. We're looking okay right now. We've got decent numbers of surpluses going on. So uh, hopefully we'll be all right. And once we build that... Uh, that refurbishing goods factory over here... For just 180 heat stamps. It's not bad. Will look even better as far as uh, materials are concerned. That's why I'm not in a rush because. Um... Oh wait, goods, goods. Sorry, materials, goods. Mix them up. Okay, I guess I could fulfill this. Are we seeing an issue because of the lack of goods? Building demand causes crime to increase. But crime is diminishing already. The only issue we're seeing is this negative 0.4 to our heat stamp collection. So yeah, I'm not in a rush. Let's save that money. Let's wait until there's a bit more pressure from this promise to the foragers. Um, I could, by the way, flip this into overdrive. Increases the generator's output by 40%, but strains it in the process. Can be turned on safely for 30 weeks. So, I mean, I suppose if I wanted to, I could pop that on. Hmm. Increases cold when lacking. Extremely increased by heat scarcity. So let's go ahead and pop this into overdrive helping us. And now it's only significantly increased by heat scarcity. I don't know if this will automatically shut off when things get too dangerous, or if I have to keep, keep like keep an eye on it. But hopefully this will do the trick for the time being. Until our uh, new idea comes to fruition. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this. Annie Evans, 15. Recently arrived laundress. Ah, this is the, uh, the daughter of that one mother who came through last session. Scrubbing a shirt, lost in her thoughts. I miss her. Go on in, she said. I'll join you later. I was deemed useful. My only merit is that I'm young and fit. Haven't lost a hand to frostbite providing for my family. 
Life here is so much better than out there, but I miss her. Every day I lose more hope. Will I ever see you again, Mom? You refuse to relax the allow productive outsiders to allow family members to join their kin. Yes, and that's why we're seeing this right now. Where is this game set? Because, Mom. Curious. Curious. I'm sure I've missed other examples of, uh, of such things, but that one stands out to me because of my own kind of speaking habits. <laughs> so that one stands out to me. I haven't actually been paying attention to any spellings. Nothing has stood out on that front. Are we almost done? Eight weeks left there. We're done with the frost breaking. Yes, let's go ahead and establish an additional logistics district. Hopefully this isn't the wrong call here. I mean, I could frost break a bit more first. Because if I make it long, I'm wasting so much space that could be used for other things, right? So just to save, what, 40 heat stamps, I'm going to waste so much space. That seems uh, suboptimal. Worse than suboptimal. Yeah, let's expand a bit here. Sure, let's do that kind of a thing. That'll be good for us, I think. Another event down here. Cutthroat economy. Paid essentials. Steward. Now that we are charging for essentials, some unemployed families are unable to afford basic necessities. Work goes to the worthiest. If these people were passed up, it's their own damn fault. They should put them to work instead of expecting the city to solve their problems, claimed an Icebloods delegate. Others are more measured, and say we could provide them with a weekly allowance. If we can't offer them work, we will give them a budget. Up to them to use it wisely. What should we do? So we could allocate an allowance... So we get less heat stamps and income. No, heat stamps is so important to us right now. We've been suffering under the lack of heat stamps. Let them fend for themselves. Aid Essentials remains unchanged. Like I said last session, the darkness is coming. <laughs> get up, son. Time to get a haircut and find a job. You're damn right. You're damn right. That work is so passe. <laughs> From a technocrat. That's a, I don't know, bit of a surprise. Perhaps I've misunderstood the core tenets of being a technocrat. I guess you're trying to kind of pass off your work to the machines. I guess. I guess. All right. How are we looking here? Heat. Soon to be fixed. Hopefully. Soon to be fixed. Temps are really far down. Eh? We got uh, week 190. So we got about 45 weeks before this whiteout comes through. Really quite nervous about that. I'm going to be honest. And what's this? Population. Growth. Why is there a circle there that looks like it's going to fill up? Oh, is that when the next uh, population bump is going to come through? That's my assumption. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Meanwhile, up over here, let's go ahead and establish our additional logistics district. Copy down there. Sure. Nice and far away, giving us plenty of room for more industrial growth over here. But uh, as that's happening, let's take a look at our next law. Society, what's being pushed for here? A youth program. Beautiful youth. Percentage of active workers is slightly increased. Crime is slightly decreased. Beautiful youth. This has been brought up before. This has been brought up before. Funerals, trust loss, research speed. Honestly, having the improved research speed might not be a bad idea. So that's that's a call. Uh, food additives. Food output increase. Food production efficiency significantly increased, but disease is marginally increased too. Now, we do have hospitals, so we might be able to take that risk on. <laughs> we might be able to take that risk on. Uh, economy, what do we have here? Agent prevention. No, not too concerned about this right now. Got laws in place here. Society. It's just about funerals and the youth. I'm thinking of what we have available to us. Since food is no longer a high-stress situation, I suppose we could go ahead and focus on the future. Research speed is slightly increased. Sounds good to me. The people are divided. I think I'll push for it and just see what happens. Not going to negotiate, not going to make any deals or anything like that. So let's go ahead and propose harvesting funerals. The deceased will be harvested and their healthy body parts used to support city health care. Unharvested remains will be incinerated and the ashes transferred to relatives. Hold on. Disease is slightly decreased. Oh, right. I was thinking of uh, food additives as what would increase disease, and this will actually be a counterpoint to that. So that's good. Sure. Let's go ahead and propose harvesting funerals. 
And again, like I said, no negotiations or anything, no pressure, nothing like that. We're simply going to go for a vote. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a tough one. I don't think this one's going to pass, to be honest. Nice. <laughs> the universe was listening. I had to throw it off. Good stuff. All right, that should help uh, speed things up a little bit. And hopefully I'm not going to regret this uh, worker shifts thing. We'll see. I got a couple of depots I need to build. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our, not our fuel depot, but our materials depot. All right, pop you down there. And then let's also take a look at food depot. Now, the food depot can't be built here because this has already been topped up. But if I expand the district down over here into this fertile ground, then I can get a food depot in there, I think. 106 foragers have joined the ice bloods. So they grow stronger. I don't mind. They like me. They support me, so I don't mind. Stuff. All deposits extracted by district are depleted. District is not working. That can't be right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I thought we had... Like, what was the number? I forget now, but I thought we had hundreds of weeks worth of wood remaining here. I suppose not anymore. Now, then, do I demolish this district? What value does it have? It's just taking up space. Or is it stuck because we're topped up? I'm going to let this construction finish, but hopefully it wasn't a waste of money. There's our weather-adjusted policy kicking in. So we're just barely under the heat needs. If we take a look at the generator, it is still on overdrive. Hopefully it'll take us through some of the colder times. I don't know if it's going to get even colder. This trouble is going to last for a bit. But let's see here. This construction is done. But yeah, no more wood remaining. Well, damn. Okay. We'll get heat, heat stamps back, so that's good. Sure, there's no value of this thing then. Except for the fact that it's holding on to a materials depot, I guess. Alright, if I go and build another industrial district once I can afford it in, what, two weeks' time? We'll see what comes of it. These guys are almost done. Alright. I mean, we're okay. We've got, we've got a massive stockpile. It'll last for ten weeks. We'll be okay. <laughs> we got time, we got time, but a little thrown off by that. But let's take a look at our next uh, idea. Ooh, waste heat conversion. So after worker shifts, we've got this visible now. Waste heat conversion lets us do what? Heat recycling. We will redirect, we will redirect Sorry, excess heat from industrial machines to housing districts and infrastructure. Oh. Heat output is extremely increased per expanded extraction district and industrial district. So we've got one expanded industrial district already. Um, I can't recall if I've expanded that extraction district that's over the coal, but that's pretty big, heat recycling. Otherwise, we have heat reinjection. Resource production efficiency is significantly increased. I'm going to regret my decision here, aren't I? <laughs> I'm going to regret the decision I go with here. I can tell right now. But this sounds good. Heat output is extremely increased per expanded extraction district and industrial district. I'm already going to benefit from that. Nine weeks. Let's get it in place before the temperatures drop even further. Sure. Let's develop that idea. Said. Let's develop that idea. Beauty. All right. What are we looking at here? I need one more week's worth of heat stamps, I believe. Yeah. I'm glad I'm keeping this, I guess. We'll keep this just to help provide the heat, I suppose. And up over here, we're done. If I head out to the map, first of all, the plane's expedition has been finished. Point of interest over here, it's going to be coal, I assume. A meager coal mine. Resting a snowdrift, we found a long abandoned coal mine nearly depleted. More than enough coal remains to send back to the city. Let's have a look. So here we got, we got a connected trail. Very curious about how this is supposed to work. Like, is that getting it back to the city? Is that... Oh, I see. I think I see. So these are the... Um, the districts that we built are uh, logistics districts. And so we're trying to connect back to the logistics district over here or over there. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So if I were to go from here, connect a trail, 
and I'm just trying to connect to here. Right, is my assumption. And then we'd work it at the cost of 10 Frostland teams to get some of that coal. Question is, how much coal do we have right now, and do we need it? 363 coal. We're not acquiring any. Wait, available zero. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair. We have this spot over here that we uh, could extract from. Trying to figure out what's the better play here. Because we have a few things we want to do. I think let's go ahead and get the coal from here first. Before we invest heat stamps out in the uh, in the frostland, let's get the coal from here first. We invested in the frost breaking already. So extraction district up over here. I really should frost break a bit more first. Being wasteful otherwise. Let's go into this little nook here, I think, if I can. I can't. Okay, so. Frost break out this way. Sure. We'll build that district there. Get that coal flowing. Uh, but back to the frost line over here. Let's go ahead and explore a bit further. What's up over here? Oh, I've turned it off. That's what's up. Okay. I was like, why is it red? Uh, okay, so we've explored this far. We can go down to the mountains now, perhaps? No, I need 40. Where can I go with just 20? I thought there were some spots. Challenging territory. And possibly find food by the hills. It's all unsafe. Safe, challenging. I suppose about the expansive dense housing district. They have influence there now. Fair enough. Curious about the glacier. We might find coal. We might find materials. Sure. Let's launch the expedition here. See what it gets us. Kind of cool. It's a glacier. <laughs> Part of the reason I'm curious. I wonder, yeah, how the trail stuff works. We'll need it soon enough, I'm sure. I'm not too fussed about uh, materials right now because of that massive surplus. Oh, it's not that massive, is it? Only six weeks. Hmm. Well, that, that's our stockpile. Let's see how this plays out. Interesting to see these guys expand and like the, the way that's represented. More foragers joining the ice bloods. Bit of a shift there going on. Let's see what's happening here. Rallying ice bloods, private study yields results. Ice bloods successfully researched woodworks. Oh, they just did that without anything from me, I guess. Stuart, the ice bloods have extended their activities into a new district. They have erected a stage near the hub and hold periodic rallies here as well. During the most recent event, they announced their brightest minds have been meeting in the evenings to draft plans and test different designs. After some time researching woodworks, they have presented their solution to the city. We've done all the work and laid out the plans. All the steward has to do is put this in action. They call on you to pledge your support for the solution. So we could pledge to build a raw log woodworks. No idea what that is. Or I could just disregard the study. Yeah, like, let me know if I'm missing something here that you guys are spotting. But I'm looking around the screen, and I don't see anything that indicates to me what the raw log woodworks actually are. I just know it's another building, but what impacts does it have? I want to know its impacts before I pledge to build one, right? But hey, what's life without risks? This is just a playthrough showcasing the game. My life doesn't depend on it. Or does it? We'll find out. Uh, sure, we'll implement the idea as soon as possible. So we've got 21 weeks for this and 34 weeks for that. Raw log woodworks. So significantly more expensive. Requires cores. Okay. That's so a more advanced building. We don't have enough. Well, we have just enough cores to build it. It's a bad promise. <laughs> The bad promise. 350 materials versus 200 materials. Fair enough. I, I see the benefit. I see why one would want to. All right. Time for a district over here to extract the coal. That should be good. Get that coal flowing. We can even expand you. Because, yeah, in four weeks' time, waste heat conversion. So we're at what? 508 right now. We'll see what that turns into. Beat time up a little bit, perhaps? I need... 
another vote on weather adjusted shifts? Are we trying to push against it, I guess? The foragers have put it on the agenda. But I thought we already have that active. Are they pushing against it, perhaps? We'll see. Um, let's go ahead and establish another district as soon as we can. It'll be the food district down over here so I can start stockpiling. Because God knows we're going to need it soon. Beat time up in the meantime. And I mean, let's take a look at what the council is saying here. Heat demand is slightly decreased. I mean... Foragers are for it. Why would they put this forward? Am I... Did I... Where is my... Oh, I could have sworn I'd push that forward. I guess not. I mean, I'm all for it. 11 hesitant. I think we'll get it. Am I? I guess I'm mixing it up with, uh, yeah, I'm mixing it up with worker shifts. Weather adjusted shifts versus weather adjusted shifts. That's okay. <laughs> Did this only become available because of our research then? So I guess what happened was. I guess what happened was we researched this, which unlocked this policy. Got it. Okay, gotcha. So I didn't actually didn't actually get activated. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and vote on this then. I want it. I want it sooner rather than later. Didn't realize the uh, the kind of chain of events there. Vote for it. Hope for the best. Just need a couple more votes. Yeah, beauty. I was pretty confident about this one. Good stuff. Let's open the generator. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Thought that was gonna... Thought I was gonna help. Heat demand is slightly decreased. Why does it feel like the situation didn't get better? Maybe I'm just... That could be just me. Either way. We'll, we'll, we'll solve the problem soon enough. There we go. Ah. It was just a lack of coal. That makes sense. The generator wasn't actually doing anything because... I guess it didn't have... Or was that because we just finished researching uh, heat recycling? That would make more sense to me. And hey, we've got a surplus now, so that's good. Let's turn this overdrive off so we can turn it on when needed. Still a bit of a drop there, uh, but that's okay. Easily fixed, I think. We just need to expand, for example, you. Um, or we can expand you. You've already been expanded. You've already been expanded, so let's go ahead and expand you. 50 heat stamps. Help with the heat situation. Materials is down to zero now, so that's going to cause trouble. Let's go ahead and... Wait. <laughs> One more week. That's all I need. One more week. Once that hits 120, we'll go ahead and start extracting more from this frozen forest. Again, still haven't been able to take advantage of the fertile ground over here. Still haven't been able to start stockpiling food. Don't love that. Let's go ahead and take a look at some ideas here. New work model. Apex workers. Oh boy. <laughs> this harsh world has no place for weakness. We will solely rely on the fittest and strongest workers and push them to achieve their maximum potential. Resource production efficiency is increased and heat demand is decreased. I mean, so that sounds all good, right? There's no negatives, there's no downsides, but that is definitely going to cause trouble. What's surprising me is that this doesn't cause issues just in writing as well. Like, if we're only letting the fittest and strongest work, doesn't that reduce the size of our workforce by default? Because the vast majority of the workforce is probably not fit and strong. <laughs> Certainly not the fittest and strongest. But despite knowing just how risky this might be, I think I'm tempted to do that. Machine attendance is the other option, reducing workforce requirement. Machines will take over the burden of work from humans. Workplaces will be optimized for machines, with workers relegated to maintenance roles. I mean, the ice bloods are growing strong. They are devoted to me, so 
I just see no issue with uh, appeasing them. And decreasing heat demand sounds like a top priority. So sure, let's go ahead and develop this idea. And again, that's a policy that'll be unlocked that'll eventually have to uh, actually get pushed through the council. What do we have here? An immediate controversy. Do it. Our guards have apprehended a researcher named Max Orkheimer. He was caught trying to destroy documents regarding Apex workers. During interrogation, he said, With this research, we open the gates to insanity and extremity. It should be destroyed, never thought of again. Ice bloods call him a lunatic, not to be listened to. They deem this research to be essential for the city's prosperity. What should be done? Continue but allow objections. It'll increase the research... Oh, tension will increase. Research speed is decreased, okay? Um, I could cancel the project. Or I can continue. Relations slightly worsened with machinists and technocrats. And research speed is extremely decreased. Oh. Well, there, there's the negative I was talking about. Came a lot sooner than I'd anticipated. But no. Continue. And fire anybody who would uh, push back. Discovery is morally neutral. And researchers should not put emotion into their work. They're not loving it. They're skeptical. Not a big fan of that. <laughs> We need a refurbishing goods factory soon. 12 weeks left to make it. This expansion has been completed and not good enough. Okay. Okay. Extraction district up over here. I would like to reduce the workforce, but I can't. I don't have a third thing to be uh, adjacent to. Copy down here. We'll need to um, we'll need to frost break and expand a bit further. Obviously, we can't afford it right now, but as soon as we can, this should hopefully at least help meet some of these needs. I assume the goods are scarce now because they need materials to produce goods, and so there's the knock-on effect happening there. Speed time up a little bit. Twenty-two weeks left for this glacier expedition to complete. Yeah, district is not working that uh with the material flowing that's hurting our income as well it's like it's a it's a series of knock-on effects and shelter is suffering now as well so we'll need an additional housing district soon too but it all comes back to heat stamps all right there we go what on heat recycling will be held in 10 weeks again this is another policy that i needed to push through it's throwing me off. It's throwing me off. Again, learning this as we go uh, go along. It's throwing me off that some of these are buildings, some of them are policies, and that's entirely on me, to be clear. I'm not saying the game has done a poor job of explaining it or something. I just completely missed that. Uh, that's what those uh, ideas were unlocking. My issue here is that quite a few people are against this, and I need those machinists to be on board, and they don't like me. If I try to negotiate, they're partially open to negotiate see what we can get out of this. Get them to vote for a grinding coal mine. I'll happily build one of those. Yeah, sure. I'll build you a grinding coal mine. I'm making a lot of promises. Making a lot of promises. Go for it. Vote. <laughs> Too many promises. Oh, man. That's good. There, that's good that there's a limit. I was actually just wondering, like, can we just keep going? Uh, but no, we gotta fulfill some of those before we can... Uh, Push for more. Okay, let's vote. We've got this. We've got this. We know we got this. Easy. I might really not have needed to negotiate, to be perfectly frank. Uh, but let's get to work. A refurbishing goods factory. Can I afford it? No. Need another four weeks worth of heat stamps. I don't think it'll finish building by the time... Uh, the promise to build is not the same as having it built. <laughs> I don't think that's going to fly. That's not great. All right, then we have the grinding coal mine and the raw log woodworks. Log. That and that needs cores. So we're going to flop on two promises here. We're going to renege on two promises here. The grinding coal mine, though, that we can do. Keep the machinists happy at least. 
Too bad the technocrats. I need to keep an eye out for technocrat promises because they're not happy right now. All right. Grinding coal mine. Get you established over here. Let's go. Because I think it's too late for the uh, the refurbishing goods factory. Even though I want it. Even though that was an optimal promise because it lined up with my uh, with my plans. That whiteout's coming soon. It'll engulf the region for months on end. Visibility will be restricted and winds will reach hurricane speeds. Temperatures will drop up to 60 degrees. Areas under whiteout will be impossible to explore. Frost on sites under whiteout will be cut off and disabled. Cool. That and invest in uh, connections that might be cut off in, you know, just a couple weeks' time now. What's getting worse? Squalor. Material scarcity is hurting there. So can I actually demolish the mechanized sawmill? I can, but it won't get me anything. I've kept my promise to the machinists. Relations improve. Trust rises. Good stuff. But yes, back on task here. I need to demolish this whole thing if I want to get um, heat stamps back. Set up over here. Empty building slot. Let's go ahead and build. And 350 materials versus 200 materials. It's tempting. We're lacking heat stamps in four weeks' time. We'll have enough heat stamps to do this. We'll eat up all of our cores, though, and I don't know... Yeah, they're too advanced to reliably manufacture. Search the frostland to find more to add to your stockpile. So what are we sacrificing just to get a few more materials out of a place that's going to be very limited to begin with? I think it needs to be a mechanized sawmill. And break another promise. The ice bloods will be fine. The ice bloods will be fine. Pop this down. We need that ASAP. We have trouble. We have trouble. And as soon as I can, I'll get the Frostbreakers out to, to dig up some more of these trees over here. So yeah, it says I have 251 weeks worth of wood remaining. I feel like it said a similar thing for this district, but very quickly, uh, it went away. Very quickly, it went away. <laughs> so I'm curious about that. Alright. How are we looking over here? 12 weeks left. I hope they don't get, like murdered by this whiteout. I hope it's not like, oh yeah, you were supposed to know to bring them back. I'm gonna let that. Yeah, the ice bloods, they'll be fine. Foragers will be fine as well. Favorable, supporting. It's the technocrats I'm a little concerned about, to be perfectly frank. They're the ones who are a little uh, on edge. Yeah, there's the construction done. Material's still not looking amazing. Rust falls a bit. It's okay. Hmm. Still growing squalor. Let's go ahead and frost break. I'm trying to figure out in which direction to keep breaking. I'm trying to open this area up, I think. So we're frost breaking so that we can expand the uh, industrial district and get some more or the extraction district, sorry, and get another mechanized sawmill going. We can eventually replace this one with another depot if needed, but uh, currently we very much don't need one. So let's frost break away. Beat them up a little bit. And I think we need a bit more money before we can expand you. Oh, we're good. It's only 50 heat stamps, so hopefully one, two, and three should do the trick. Let me check something real quick. So right now, we have 256k wood remaining. Let's say, yeah, 256, let's say, and it should be more than that when we expand. So 256. Boom, boom, boom. Give that the time it needs to expand. Go. Oh. Apex workers put on the agenda. Oh, I guess that's another agenda item. Well, the idea just finished being researched, so I, I, I'm not annoyed at myself for waiting too long or anything there. Uh, but over here, 
Okay, 430. So con confirmation that it works like that. Disabled due to controlling district state. What does that mean? Yeah. Activate. Weird. Now let's go ahead and build ourselves another mechanized sawmill over here. Worth the investment, I think. Shelter is going to become a problem. I mean, it's already a problem, truth be told. I gotta figure that out. And goods, hopefully, will be okay soon as well. Good scarcity does what? Uses heat stamp income. Yeah, starting to hurt us again. All right, let's take a look at uh, some other ideas. We've reached the end of this, it looks like. Very well. Advanced coal mines, charcoal plants to convert wood into heat. Advanced good factories. Bare bones goods factory. A large factory where old domestic goods, no matter how soiled, are refurbished into new ones, which carry out their functions using minimal resources. But marginally increasing disease, 50 goods output, 30 materials requirement, massive workforce requirement, and an increased heat demand. Or the automated goods factory. So fewer workers, more materials, more heat, and more squalor. I would expect using automation would uh, reduce heat demand, actually. Because if there's machines, where there's machines, there's heat. I would expect the machines to generate heat. Um, or maybe they need to be heated so they can stay operational. Because if they get too cold, they stop moving. That makes sense, actually. It works both ways, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that we go with the Bare Bones Goods Factory. Oh, we cannot afford the research, unfortunately. Okay. But we don't. Not just yet. Maybe we hold off on uh, research for the time being. Filtration towers to decrease squalor. Okay. Housing blocks. These will help with the shelter requirements, but I don't have empty spots in my residential districts. I have to build a district anyway. I think right now, maybe we hold off on... Uh... Oh, but there's a heat stamps thing here. So maybe I should push in this direction in the hopes of acquiring something that gives us more heat stamps. Sure. Housing block. Which way? Oh, it's all the same? Not all the same. So we got housing blocks. Then we got dense housing blocks. And then we got subsidized housing blocks. Why would subsidizing housing blocks give us heat stamp ink? Wouldn't it take away because we're subsidizing? Residential towers providing functional shelter with basic amenities to workers and their families and supported by the city. Yeah, that should take heat stamps away from us, I would assume. I wonder if doing this for the technocrats will make them less skeptical of us. 50 heat stamps. Sure, let's develop the idea. And it's mainly to get the uh, the tree to go further in that direction. Again, I'll need another residential district anyway. An extra 10 living spaces isn't going to do anything for us. But hopefully this construction... will do the trick. Good. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Still need to uh, get the goods factories up and running. But I do wonder about this, like... Demolishing it, it feels like we shouldn't demolish it again because of the heat uh, it's providing because it's expanded. But at the same time, it feels like a waste of space, right? <laughs> what kind of catch-22 situation there? Uses cold when lacking. Alright. Alright, speed time up a little bit, I think. Yeah, the raw log woodworks aren't going to happen. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Foragers keep joining the ice bloods. I mean, the foragers are just 26% of our, uh... I think, puckered vortex explored. <laughs> puckered vortex? Alright. <laughs> That's certainly a name. Puckered vortex. Alright. Let's see what it, uh... Let's see what this puckered vortex holds. Those left behind. While scavenging a deserted campsite, we came across a well-preserved diary. A quick skim revealed the author's catalog of her husband's mental decline since the discovery of a black fount, likely an oil seep. Their people had begun increasing their dependence on the substance and were looking into its potential medicinal properties. He was fiercely opposed, and from the sound of it, his opposition wasn't well received. 
She wrote of a region similar to one southwest of here. I see. And what's this? Trapped Dreadnought. Oh. After a while, you forget how big the Dreadnoughts were. 600 metric tons of pure iron. We ran into one half buried in a deep chasm. It was nearly vertical, towering over us, dark and foreboding. Its crew froze, trying to free it. Their tools still in their hands. Our nimblest scout climbed up to the cargo bay and discovered coal, raw timber, and steel plates inside. Sadly, we won't be able to scrap the dreadnought, but we could recover its cargo with minimal effort. So I could take the cargo. 5,000 material stockpile, 10,000 coal stockpile. Wow! But it'll need five Frostland teams to... Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be a lump sum. I'm sure it's going to come through slowly. Or we could come back later. So take the cargo. It's just five teams. Take the cargo. Oh, yeah. No. I guess they're bringing it back right now. Fair enough. Now, the Sea of Ice, I'm thinking, is where this was pointing. And you can see... Rosslyn becomes inaccessible. Storms force the Ice Bloods rally to end. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at the Sea of Ice. Exploration impossible. Whiteout in the city. Damn it! I feel like that's where we'd find the oil that we're looking for. That I assume we're looking for. Here comes the Whiteout. Oh, wow. Okay. More like a blackout. Damn. So much darker. As I promised you, the Ice Blood's broken. It is what it is. We gotta be careful, though. They are growing in size. How are we looking for heat? We're looking good. Negative 100 degrees Celsius, are you kidding me? Oh man, now that, now that is cold. <laughs> that is cold. The materials are looking good, we're stockpiling. Goods, that's still a problem. Heat stamps are coming through. Let's go ahead and solve the goods situation, I think. Or let's solve the housing situation, jeez. In the middle of all this, oops. I hit C because I'm playing uh, Manor Lords as well. And so C is the construct button there, so naturally went to hit C. Housing district. Let's go ahead and do one, two, three. Two, three. Get the extra heat from both of these. Um, and we'll expand, I think, to do one, two, three, so that the next housing district can get that adjacency bonus as well. So for the last one, let's pop you down over here. I'm going to leave this area clear because there's fertile ground there. There's food there. Doing what we can. Squalor is growing. Don't love that. Ice splits are going home. I didn't even know there was a rally going on because time was moving forward as we were, as we were looking at the Frostland. All right, the whiteout. Is it going to end on week 220? Is that the uh, inclination, the implication here? Or is it going to start again? Because I see there's a whiteout symbol, I guess, stacked there. Or, no, there isn't. It's just giving me the, uh, the tooltip. Hopefully warmer season means the, the whiteout will end. Because that's soon enough. And what do we have here? Why is this shut down? Lack of required deep deposit. Oh. Okay, okay. Well, I wonder if I do demolish this district and all its buildings. Because what's it going to do here? Like, sure, I, I guess I, I have... I could demolish these guys instead and build stockpiles uh, or depots there instead. I guess that's the play. But this is rough. Um, now, granted, we have 16 weeks worth of food. Resource Transport Group has lost its cargo in the water. Are you for real? Are you for real? God damn it. I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have... I knew I shouldn't have pulled the trigger on that. And so we've lost all that cargo. Oh my god, I deserve it, don't I? Should have gone with my gut there. I like that it does that. That's good. I like the unexpected hits like that. This cold is a problem, folks. Let's go ahead and turn this into overdrive. Still not enough. That is still not enough. This housing district has been completed. Okay. figure out how I go about solving the uh, the weather situation. Well, it's diminishing now, so that's good. Cold is diminishing. Squalor is growing. Crime is stable. Okay. 
165. Heat stamps. Let's invest in the uh, goods. Furbishing goods factory. A heat demand. Makes me nervous every time. Anything else I would want to do? Subsidized housing block. Oh, I can place a subsidized housing block anywhere. Interesting. So it's not just tied to the residential district. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. So I could, you know, hypothetically back over here. Like, why have these? Let's go ahead and demolish you. Uh, yes, let's go ahead and demolish you. Yes, I guess it'll take some time. Let that happen. Uh, but similarly, at the same time, let's go ahead and make some... Do some construction as well. Get the refurbishing goods factory. And over here, we can do a food depot. And we can do uh, a, a housing... Um, we don't need a food depot anymore. Because that food surplus is slowly draining away. <laughs> but yeah, we'll need a food district over here ASAP. ASAP. Week 220. Oh man, that is not nearly as close as uh, it felt just 30 seconds ago. Now that all these streaks have become so much longer, that, that 20 weeks feels like it might as well be 100. Plus, losing all those resources. That was so much coal we were going to bring back. That was so much coal. That was so much material. Oh, that's good. That's a good punishment. <laughs> I deserve that. I deserve that. All right. Looking good in terms of goods. Excellent. We're stockpiling. That's fine. Those are stockpiling. Okay. Heat, though. What can we do for heat? A housing distribution. Heat stamps income per capita is slightly increased if we do merit-based housing. Shelter availability, is shelter availability is significantly increased. Okay. Again, these are policies we'd have to pass. Or mandatory crowding. Shelter availability is greatly increased. No change to heat stamps. I'm gonna go with the ice bloods here, I think. I'm inclined to go with the ice bloods. The workers' housing, meanwhile, requires an active food extraction or industry district. Okay. Five shelter availability, ten heat demand. Oh, workers' village gives us heat stamps income. Subsidized residential complex providing comfortable housing to workers and their families. No, that's too expensive to research right now. Let's instead develop merit based housing. Heat stamp income will increase, shelter availability will increase. And it costs nothing for us to develop except for time. 21 weeks. Let's go for it. Work compensation. Just notice this. Resource productivity. Heat stamps income decrease. Okay. Really is heat that I would like to do something for. Fuel. Fuel, not heat. Are they the same thing? It seems to be. Because worker shifts had to do with heat demand, and it's labeled as fuel. So I wonder if we chase after the advanced goods factory, if we'll end up exploring what's down here. This will cost me a oh, hundred. God damn it. But that could really solve a lot of our problems. All right, let me take a look at something here. What's the food situation? We'll last for nine weeks. We spend 100 right now on the uh, the research. We'll have 45 left over. We need 100. So in three weeks' time, we'll be able to build the food district. So we should be okay. All right. Let's go for it. Advanced goods factories in the hopes of getting... Oh, no. No community can research this topic. Well, I'm glad I checked that. So there's no point of going down that way then. Fair enough. There's, there's this one. There's this one, but we can't get to it because generator upgrade isn't available. And neither is autonomous heaters. So I don't think we can get down there. All right, well, that makes the decision a bit easier. Economy, housing distribution, merit-based housing. Let's get that shelter. Let's get that, uh, get those heat stamps. Sure. And it's free. Cool. With that, let's go ahead and build our food district. Are there adjacency bonuses to be had here? Yes. The heat. That's all we can do. Looks like we could have stacked it twice over. Oh, one from each district. 
Gotcha. Okay. Learnings for a future run, perhaps. It's okay. Wow. Really starting to fill out over here. Really starting to fill out. That's cool. Very ominous. 18 weeks left until the weather gets a little bit warmer. And I'm assuming that's when the whiteout ends. But at least all of these are looking pretty good now. Shelter will be soon solved, hopefully. Eat. That's the problem. Heat is the problem. We're currently heat recycling. Gonna expand another district. Already been expanded. I could expand you. 50 heat stamps. Wonder. 150 from Extraction District, 50 from Industrial District. Will that really make 100 more? That's not going to solve the problem. That doesn't sound right. Go ahead and expand you, though. See what difference that makes. We're at 555 right now. See what that does for us. I'm up a little bit. Two hundred and five weeks and fifteen more weeks of this whiteout. All right. Food should be doing better once we build this building, which I should be able to afford. I always drum hot house. Go for it. We have just enough workers. That'll take four hundred. We have just enough workers. This expansion is done. Hang on. That didn't help at all. My misunderstanding? <laughs> Take a look at survival. Heat recycling. Heat output is extremely increased per expanded extraction district, expanded industrial district. We just expanded our industrial district. Right. And this went from a... I mean, I, I guess the food district got built at the same time, and that that's much worse than, uh, than the benefit of... No, but you can see at the bottom, output, industrial district is still at 50, like it was before. So has that not registered for some reason? Or am I missing something? I might be missing something. What I'm missing is heat. <laughs> I need heat. The food situation, are we solving it? You're active now. on its way down. I don't love that. Our stockpile is on its way down. Looks like we're producing enough though to maintain, like demand and output are equal. Again, I could expand this and get another, um, well, I got a frost break first, right? Yeah. Do that. Got iron over here for when we next need uh, materials. We'll run out soon enough up over here. And it says 230 weeks um, uh, left, but we'll find out. Cross breaking is almost done. Go ahead and expand you. Get that extra warmth. There we go. And pull you up to there. Cool. Let's take a look at this. Lack of workforce. Yeah, it's getting tight. Steward, there's a lack of spare labor in the city. We're all stretched thin. It may be wise to seek laws or transport structures that will help get us more help us get more done. Otherwise, we may have to prioritize what work gets done, which districts stay open, and which we close for now. Yeah, we're almost at a population like spike. But things are getting real tight. Demolish both these buildings. 179 people froze to death in the city due to cold. Some of our people have frozen to death. I was hoping to avoid that. Generator overdrive is at dangerous levels. Oh no. 35 more people sick and unable to work. The storm is over. But the danger is not gone. Folks, as the sun creeps through the skies once more, 
We're going to go ahead and call it a session here. Once more in a stressful spot. I thought we'd recovered quite nicely from session one woes, but uh, we've very quickly fallen into session three woes now. I think we'll bounce out of them as well. Uh, we only have 80 weeks left in this run, though, so how are we... Yeah, you know what? We might we might kick off a new... You guys let me know in the comments down below. Should I kick off a new run after this one finishes, hits its 300-week limit, and uh, try to actually do this much more efficiently? I think the opening kind of slowed me down a lot with, uh, with the onboarding and all that, and me kind of just following that as it pushed me along, as opposed to making my own decisions. So I think we could be a lot more efficient and actually succeed uh, in, in, in some of these uh, objectives, in at least one of them. Let me know if you'd like to see that on the channel, folks. But otherwise, let me know down below with a like and a comment if you're enjoying Frostpunk 2 in general on the channel. If you'd like to see more of it, you know, in the future as well when the game eventually releases. And if you've not yet subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing too for more of these kinds of games. Apart from that, though, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.